Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. I want to show you a little workout that you can do on the stairs before you start your tennis session. And you can also use this workout as part of tennis at home sessions when you work on your forehands and backhands and when you have to engage your legs and hips. So I'm going to release the tennis at home videos a bit later, but first I want to give you this one because you can use it also in your home workouts. Now, why is it good to engage your legs and hips with this exercise. Because typically when players start their tennis session, they start with a little mini tennis. And because if they don't have yet good biomechanics, good connection of the legs and hips engaged when they're hitting their ground strokes, they're going to start playing too much with their arm. Uh, players will feel that if they engage their body, they're going to hit the ball too hard. And so they're going to just play with the arm and the body will be kind of still. And that becomes your habit. You kind of prime yourself with that sensation when you play a little mini tennis. And then when you go to the baseline, you still have that sensation that it's all about arm. And that can stay with you the whole session or just becomes part of your technique. So I use this exercise or these exercises a lot, especially with juniors, because I want to engage their lower body immediately before they even start to hit the ball. So I want to engage their legs and I want to engage their hips to make sure that they don't forget about that, they, they feel them really well. And then once they're hitting the ball with the arm and we tell them various things about top spin or acceleration or something, that the lower body is still engaged. If you're going to use this as part of your tennis at home sessions for forehands and backhands, then this comes just after feeling the ground. So I will show you exercises on how you can work on your fundamental biomechanics at home with no equipment, nothing, just standing at home and doing various exercises. But uh, this one with the stairs or just with the stepper is very good to engage your legs. Another purpose that I have to mention is balance, as maybe you have seen my videos on balance that I find one of the key fundamentals of ground strokes in tennis. And if you're not balanced, you're likely going to miss the shot. And with this exercise, we're not just stimulating the legs and pelvis hip rotation, but also balance. So I'll briefly show you the exercise for the neutral stance forehand, meaning I want to engage my left leg and rotate my hips and then I will explain. So the exercise would look like this. This is one variation. So I choke up on the grip. I go like this. So I just want to hold balance a little bit and rotate my hips. So whenever I, I step on the stair, I want to extend, so there's no other choice. That's why we use stairs, because they force you to engage your legs. If you're doing a, let's say, neutral stance exercise on a flat surface, nothing is forcing you to engage your legs, so you can just kind of cheat. You can cheat your way, you can be on a straight leg, and you don't really feel how you need to engage the leg and uncoil with the hips. So. That's the reason why we're doing these exercises on a stair, on the stairs or on a stepper. You can just have one stepper. For example, if I didn't have stairs, I could just do on one. You can do that at first. So the goal is always very important. So obviously you cannot avoid engaging the leg, but uh, the wrong ways of doing it is not twisting your hips, not rotating your pelvis. So you could do like this, for example. So this one is not right because you see my hips stayed at the same angle. So this exercise is focusing on your legs and hips, pelvis region. So it's very important that you're constantly thinking about twisting your hips. And then you can press with the back foot. So I will show you then from the back angle how to do it. You hold a little bit to feel your balance. Then you reset and start the next one. So this would be for the neutral stance forehand. The reason why I want to choke up on the grip is to take attention away from the arm 
and the hand. If you hold the racket at the end, your hand will feel that, your wrist will feel that, and it will want to do something. So your attention is going to go to your hand, and we don't want that. So one way to get rid of your attention on the hand is to choke up on the grip like this and not really do the whole stroke. So you can see I just do, go, do a little bit like this. So I don't do whole follow through. The other way is you hold the racket like this, you know, like this. You go here and you just do a little uh, swing like this, just a little rotation that you also see with your eyes. Oh, my racket moved. 90 degree at 90 degree angle from here to here so that also helps you be aware okay I want to feel that my right hip or pelvis is rotating around about 90 degrees so you do here you hold balance then you reset you start again with the turn step and rise and you can help with the back foot to hold your balance how many repetitions so here are five stairs and uh, usually I make players do four or five sets of, of one stance, one leg, one stroke. So for the forehand I can use my left leg, I'm a right hander so I can use my left leg. So I would go four or five times to do about 20-25 repetitions. And then I can do open stance, so on open stance I go with the right leg. and. I want to hold balance, so I come here, I do a little swing and hold balance. Again, I can use the back leg to push a bit against the stair like this. I push and it helps me control balance. When you're placing the foot for the open stance, you must place the foot at around 45 degrees. So here's how an open stance exercise would look like. Just keep in mind it's not perfect open stance because in open stance we don't want really for right handers we don't want in reality the right leg to be in front of the leg leg like this it's not optimal it's not ideal because my right hip is already forward and I can't rotate it much but this is just an exercise it's a bit of an exaggeration and it still helps you feel the engagement of the leg so you go like this and hold balance for a second then you reset then you put your leg and next one what can be done wrong with this exercise is that when you step on the stair you don't coil your hip so if you go like this and up you see it's nothing is happening so when I step on the stair I need to coil my hips backwards so that I feel twisted I feel some torque and then I uncoil so until you really feel that deeply inside that it's part of you you'll have to do it consciously because you might just do like this so you're doing something for your leg but nothing for your pelvis you see the pelvis is not really rotating it's still at the same angle so when you step on the stair you must put weight on the leg and coil which means you twist your pelvis back as far as it goes. So when it locks, it doesn't go, now you're coiled. So now from this position, you go like a spiral upwards. So use the leg and pelvis rotation. So here, both arms here, don't do like this. Here, hop, here, hop. What also helps with the balance is that you look straight. So pick a point there somewhere in the distance and look straight you can look down first to see what you're doing okay I'm like this I'm like this you can observe your body but eventually it's not good to keep your head like this and do exercises because your balance is a little bit disturbed because of your head angle so eventually you just have to feel you coil you step you look straight and you hold balance and you try to feel this line from the head to the foot. So here coil, load the leg, go. So one handed backhand, you place your foot at 45 degree angle 
you can choke up again on the grip you can hold even here if you want for the with the left hand or here let's say here and you go then you hold balance for a split second you go hop so I will show you one time that you see that it's quite simple but it you might not have such good balance at first so you might do like this and you will see that you're losing balance so very important to be aware of your balance and try to hold it and on the one hand it back and do not rotate like this so you want to stay sideways just like this and hold balance then you reset so hold for about two seconds one two reset one two what can you do wrong with this exercise you can put too much weight on the back foot that applies also to forehands I will show you from a different angle also so don't do like this and then leaning backwards on this so even when you step on the stair first you just place your foot so you place your foot and you step on the stair before I begin the move I have more weight on the on this leg than on the back leg I don't have weight on the back leg it's pushing me backwards it's very unstable so when I step and I plant the foot the weight distribution is probably 60 40 to 70 30 so I'm already putting weight on my leg and I have more weight on the front leg than on the back leg and then from here I also want to feel pelvis and to feel that something is happening here so I want to coil and uncoil see coil uncoil hop and hold then reset try to feel pelvis lock good stability on the foot whole foot down and rise of course you can also practice open stance one-handed back and why not it's uh, used many times on the return of the surf when you don't have time to step across so you just go from this leg and you have to play or when you're in emergency so this is very simple very good exercise to help you feel the basics so again you step the foot is at around 45 degree angle more weight on the front foot so not on the back leg like this on this one and hold next one load coil hold hold I fix my eyes I try to feel very stable so do not rush when you plant your foot you must not feel wobbly in any way and then you start the move you're gonna be off balance so when you plant your foot and you position you must feel that you've calmed down and you're very stable and steady and then from here you go then this steadiness will remain if you're rushing you're gonna be doing like this and this exercise then makes no sense for two-handed backhand the exercises are the same you plant your foot for neutral stance you just go like this so don't do whole back swings because your attention will be too much on your arms your arms will be too active and then you don't hear what's going on with your legs meaning you don't feel so do not make big movements do not make big back swing just keep it here and focus on the lower body hold position you can press the leg so here next one I fix one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the posture posture many times gets broken with two-handed backhands because players do like this instead of like this which means you have to have a straight back so that your legs work when the back go, goes like this when you like lean then you're basically avoiding the work with the legs when the ball is lower you're reaching to the ball like this then your leg is not working instead of like this so try to be aware that you have a 
straight back, firm back, not bending like this. You have good posture, your head, chin up, you're looking, and now you go up. And next one. And next one. And for open stance, same load coil. The weight is already here, the weight is not here. Here. One. Two, three, I hold a bit to feel that I'm calm and stable. After a while, when you become really comfortable, calm and stable, so which means you do a move and you're not, for example, being all the time thrown around, but you step on the stair and you feel, okay, I'm upright, I'm calm, I'm stable. One, two, three and so on, you can start combining a little bit the exercises. For example, you can do forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand. Here it is again, there you go. Forehand and immediately next stair, backhand, immediately pivot next stair, hop, hop. Same goes for open stance. You go open stance forehand, hop, open stance backhand, hop, open stance forehand, hop, open stance backhand, hop, open stance forehand, hop. Or by holding the racket like this, or with the medicine ball, you can hold the medicine ball and you do exercises like this, or with the racket like this, you go hop, hop, hop. or open stance. Lost balance. One more time. Here we go. So I'll show you the exercises from the back view, but also a variation if you don't have stairs, you're, let's say you're at home and maybe you have a stepper or you can improvise something so that you just have like one step. So you can do with one step just like this. You can keep the foot there and you just practice, okay, legs and hips, see? So this is what we are trying to engage, this is what we're trying to activate, this is what we're trying to wake up because so many tennis strokes of uh, recreational tennis players, they look something like this. So this hip always staying back. So it's very important that the body works in sync, in coordination. It's a kinetic chain and that provides you with power and with control of the ball. So. Most of the times I'm correcting with players this part of the body because they are so focused on this part, then this one shuts off. And that's why it's important to every time until it becomes part of you to wake it up, make sure that it's engaged before you start your tennis session, that when you're hitting your forehands and backhands, that this pelvis region and legs are functioning properly. So if you just have one stair, let's say backhand, you can do like this, you just transfer weight, open stance here, oh, two-handed, one, so you're just going up and down. So when you start, we're going back to forehand now, neutral, you can use this back foot and you press it against the stair like this, because that is also going to help you feel the pelvis here, you're going to feel that you have to push and engage to press the foot into the stair and it also helps you hold balance. So you go like this, now you press and hold for about two seconds, then you reset. Then you go next one, make sure you're very stable, hop, and position. Then once you see what's going on, don't look down anymore, look straight, go here. Hold. Next one. Hold. Next one. Hold. For open stance, you can do the same. Hop. You hold the leg like this. Hop. Hop. Next one. Hop. Next one. Hop. Next one. When you're doing the one-handed backhand, I don't recommend that you 
press your foot to the stair because you will over rotate. So it's much better to just make the leg firm and strong like this and hold position on one leg for a split second. Then you reset and you go. So again, don't complicate with back swings. The technique of the arm movements is not priority here. It's not that important. You're just doing something general like from here to here. Staying sideways and balanced and try to engage the pelvis. So don't just step on the stair like this because you see when I do this there's basically no pelvis movement and when we hit a one-handed backhand there is always some pelvis hip rotation that then helps us accelerate the racket. So in these conditions when you're completely in, your, in control of yourself, you try to feel, okay, what does it mean to coil, to twist my pelvis, pelvis back, up. Here, back, pelvis, twist, coil, uncoil. Two-handed backhand, very important, pelvis twist, hop. When you're doing two-handed backhand, you can press the leg. There's more pelvis rotation. You can press the leg and hold. To conclude this session, I want to mention that I use this exercise many times with juniors if I had like a private lesson with them. And uh, I would just tell them, okay, do the stairs thing, the stairs exercise. And it takes about five minutes to go through all four combinations, which means forehand neutral stance and open stance so forehand neutral stance a few times open stance and then backhand neutral stance or right leg and left leg so it takes about five minutes and when the player gets on the court their lower body is engaged it has a uh, woken up it's not sleeping anymore and so there is a high probability that when they start hitting the ball they will not be just arming it. And if you're using these exercises now, in this uh, period of time where we are in a lockdown in one way or another during the coronavirus, then you can really rebuild your stroke, especially your legs and, and hip rotation. If you practice this every day and you don't have to practice one hour, you can do one session in the morning and one in the afternoon of about five minutes and if you're doing this for about two weeks you will definitely see good results thanks for watching i will see you in the next videos where i will show you how you can work on your forehand and your backhand if you're stuck at home and you cannot hit any balls and you will see that there are some very useful exercises that can help you engage all body parts and in time this is going to come together you're going to feel much more in sync, much more in control, and of course you're going to play better tennis. So see you next time.